Hello, my name is Erica, and I have the privilege of introducing a very special Make-A-Wish alumna, my daughter, Mercy. At 16, Mercy was diagnosed with lymphoma and underwent four months of an extremely difficult chemo regimen. She was declared disease-free in 2021 and is currently pursuing her dream of becoming a cancer researcher and oncologist. No parent is ever prepared to hear the words, your child has cancer. The way life just stops, the way there's forever the before and the after, the way that each morning you wake up to a nightmare as you realize your child has cancer and it wasn't just a bad dream. The way you hand over the reins of your life to a team of professionals who tell you when and where to go and what to do. There's no preparation for watching your child experience an absolute absence of comfort and hope as the life-saving treatment slowly makes her weaker and weaker to the point of breaking her. It was in that darkness that the light and love of Make-A-Wish appeared. When you're diagnosed with cancer, friends can sometimes distance themselves because they don't know what to say or do. Sue and Denise, our wish-granting volunteers, did the opposite. They pressed in and persisted in partnering with Mercy for the sake of building her dream. And it was in that dreaming, that promise of an end to IVs and unbearable nausea, that the tiniest spark of hope emerged. Mercy's wish became a lifeline, an escape from a world where her disease governed just about everything in her life. I won't go into all the details of the incredible vacation we took, but I'll leave you with one lasting visual forever imprinted on my mind and my heart. As our boat docked at the end of a sunset cruise, Mercy asked me to take a picture of her in the sunset. Perched on the bow with her back turned, I captured her strong silhouette with flames of color behind her. That snapshot symbolizes a future filled with many unknowns, but one aglow with possibilities. As I now face my own cancer diagnosis, I hold those memories we made together on our trip that much closer as forever treasures in my heart. I may not get to go to Hawaii to see sunsets, but I can enjoy the ones from our window and remember the power of a wish. Mercy, Daddy and I are so proud of you. Your willingness to share your story for the sake of even one more child receiving the gift of hope is a beautiful way to make beauty from ashes. Tonight, you tell the story of hope, and as you do, I celebrate how your own wish can continue to live and inspire. And I am so, so grateful. Thank you, Mama. Tonight, I want to tell you how my wish saved me. Not from dying from cancer, of course, but from losing myself to it. My wish was granted in 2022. I wished to go to Hawaii, and it was an amazing experience for me and my family, one we'll never forget. My cancer journey started when I was just a little girl. Over the years since, I have done research, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, shaved my head and donated the hair because I reached our goal and exceeded it, and won awards for research projects. In all those moments, I thought I knew cancer. Then, it came knocking at our door. September 16th, 2020. Only two weeks after I had shaved my head, that was the first time we heard the word cancer as a possible explanation for why I had been so sick. I quickly became very aware of my ignorance as to what a cancer diagnosis truly meant, a type of suffering you can't even begin to grasp until it's you. The next six months contained the worst things I have ever experienced in my life. I received my diagnosis, started fertility treatment, underwent planned and emergency surgeries alike, got a permanent IV to my heart placed, began chemo, and I started to disappear. Chemo hit me harder, much, much harder than anyone on my expert care team had seen before. Over the eight rounds, I went unresponsive, demanding an emergency full resuscitation, was hospitalized extensively, 
had to relearn how to walk and was unable to eat. I experienced fits of adverse reactions to the treatments and medications, losing parts of my memory and control over my body. I became a guinea pig as new combinations of medications were used to try and bring me back to no avail. And those are the moments I remember. My only goal was to be asleep. Absent from time and awareness, the days passed quicker, I couldn't feel my body, and I could pretend, if only for a moment, that I wasn't in agony. I would squeeze myself into a tighter and tighter ball on that hospital bed, hoping if only I made myself small enough, the pain would do the same. I drowned in dissociation, dreading anything that made me return to the surface. My parents said that my life force disappeared after the third chemo infusion. Cancer is six letters, but it is so much bigger than that. Six letters will never be able to explain this monster that drains the life from some and steals the lives of so many others. Those six letters strung together are a word you never want to hear, and they grow more haunting as time passes. You worry that they will morph into a different set of six letters. The end. There is joy in this story, I promise, but it is intermingled with the suffering. And I think it's important that we talk about the suffering and the pain, because without knowing those things, you can't comprehend how crucial it is to have hope. A wish might not have saved me from dying, but it saved my life. It kept my life force, my imagination and hope, my belief in joy and an after. One of the few things that kept me rooted in reality, with my eyes focused on the future instead of my possible grave, was this opportunity to create a wish. I would close my eyes and dream of Hawaii, thinking about my family smiling on the beach and the sun streaming on my face when the smells and sounds of the hospital threatened to suffocate me. My wish let me escape my present by picturing the future. I returned to myself, and that is a gift I will never be able to articulate. From the moment our wish-granting volunteers, Sue and Denise, came into our lives, they created moments of hope for us. Where cancer created suffering, they created joy. They kept our eyes fixed on life after cancer, distracting us from the crippling hurt of the current moment and promising a rebuttal against the notion that there would be no after. Our trip was a fairy tale. Restaurants with decadent platters of delicious dishes, glowing pools that overlooked the city and ocean, swims with turtles and rainbow fish and urchins, parrot portraits and salty smiles and roadside riches and just pure family time. Each moment was punctuated by a different type of joy, a, a celebration. It was incredible and each Activity, car, meal, bed was taken care of, not just fiscally, but organizationally. The freedom that came from everything being sorted out, an experience that rode on the heels of us scrambling each day to figure out how to survive until the next, was a gift of a magnitude I cannot even describe. That trip had such a deep meaning to us because it gave us a chance to be together. Cancer doesn't just torture you, it tortures those you love. My mom, dad, brothers and sisters, they experienced cancer too. My wish wasn't just for me, it was for my family as well. For a while, we weren't thinking about cancer, we were simply enjoying time together, when time used to be the enemy and togetherness a foreign concept. Six months, after I was diagnosed with cancer, I hit the gong at Seattle Children's Hospital, declared cancer-free. <laughs> Thank you. Well, cancer was no longer growing in my body, though. Its shackles and imprint remained. I'm permanently disabled because of my cancer treatment. I fought through hell, 
through the embodiment of suffering because I was promised healing and revival. But my body was beaten and bruised, my mind scrambled and shaken. I was bewildered at my damage and inabilities that remained even in remission. Those six months, my supposed run with cancer was just the beginning. Cancer never stops hurting, never stops restricting and reminding you of your struggles and obstacles. I will never be truly free from cancer, neither will my family. I'm so thankful for my wish, because it gave me not only something to look forward to during my treatment and before I was cancer-free, but something to bring me joy long after, even now. We have those memories forever, memories that we could never have created without the generosity of people like you. Today, I'm a freshman at Stanford, and my goal hasn't changed. <laughs> Thank you. I'm studying human biology in the hopes that I will someday conquer cancer for others. <laughs> Thank you. It's so hard to live happily knowing that there are so many other kids going through the awfulness that you barely survived and that some of them won't make it. That's called survivor's guilt. Now, three years later, almost, from treatment. Time isn't my enemy, but my partner. As I try to fill each day to the fullest, I've gotten to taste survivor's joy. And that is what hope creates, change. Change from grief and suffering, sorrow and hurt, hopelessness and despair, into joy and excitement. The license to dream for the future and celebrate dreams come true. My wish embodied the hope that ended up being my lifeline. Everyone here tonight is helping create that same crucial, beautiful hope for others. Knowing that all of you here tonight are granting that life-saving gift to other kids means the world to me. I know the depths to which pain and sorrow can drag a person, and I want you to know that hope, hope is what brings you back. You saved my life, and tonight I am here because there are no words to articulate how grateful I am for such a gift. Thank you. <laughs>